Um, well, I came with three films, so I imagine that uh, we will screen maybe two or three of them, we'll see. Um, and then I'm really looking forward like meeting people and exchanging ideas. I really came for that actually because uh, I mean sort of, uh, you know, we work uh, a lot and then we, we don't have much time to think about what we do sometimes. Um, and I also find that there is like a, there's a lack of debate generally speaking in, in the art field. You could say yeah, there are critics of course and people writing but uh, uh, meeting people is always different and also, what I find really interesting in the in the format here is possibly that we have like uh, different people meeting uh, and talking to each other. So it's not it's not uh, one to one like now. It will probably be something much more open. So I think this is really interesting, uh, and, and I was really interested by by that uh, that idea. And um, yeah, and then I'm really uh, interested in getting questions about the work and seeing how people react. Uh, because you, al you also, as an artist, uh, work um, and then you deliver somehow the work. Um, you can have like returns from the critique and, and from peers that you are uh, close to, but uh, it's, it's not very often that we have really the space to discuss uh, and to, to raise issue about the work. So I think it's, it's really necessary and I'm, I'm really looking forward. Um, I don't know a lot of people in the guest uh, except uh, Filippa. Uh, I know her work a little bit, uh, like more than a little bit actually. But uh, uh, and then I saw also that there were like more cinematographers, so I'm really interested also in, in having exchange about that and coming f more from the field of uh, contemporary art, visual art, um, and using moving images in my work. Uh, it's also most of the time I think we have a different kind of uh, uh, practice, although I'm really interested also in, in, let's say, at large the question of realism and documentary. So I kind of still use protocols that are coming from documentary uh, cinema. cinema uh, and, um, but all, all, always they are mixed w with other types of codes that are I would say coming more from conceptual art or other types of practice and I most of my work is like trying to mix these and see how what kind of experiment it is uh, and what kind of result it can give so so yeah we'll see and I'm really also here for discovery so it's it's always good well I think more and more let's say for 10 years things have changed a lot I think um, but uh, I think that for a very long time uh, the field of contemporary art was uh, not so open to experimental cinema. Of course, there are many uh, um, moments where you could say that what I'm telling now is completely false and not true. But uh, generally speaking, if you still see what kind of reaction, what kind of, uh, even I would say, um, not even it's more than reaction it's sometimes it's really like epidermic reaction also you know against experimental cinema um, that are still very vivid in in the field of contemporary art you can understand that there's a lack of of knowledge also of the whole history of experimental cinema within the contemporary art field so now of course there are like some spaces like here the seminar uh, some festivals that are that have been programming you know cinematographers with artists working with moving images and that created this kind of uh, space where people can meet and, and, and meet and discuss but if you if you also take into consideration the the whole scene of uh, cinema festivals um, there's not so many festivals that are open uh, to those practices also of artists so uh, things have been changing a lot but um, I think there's still uh, uh, plenty of space to create for this discussion and this, uh, this, these, these meetings of, of, of users and practitioners coming from different fields. Um, but of course we have like a lot of artists that have been trying to do cinema and also we know like the very well-known people also who were supposed to be artists and are now seen as cinematographers. Um, 
um, like uh, Steve McQueen and people like that, you know, that became very big names. Um, but uh, so things have changed a lot the 10 last years, we can say. Huh? Um, well, for example, if I have to speak about the, the last film that I did, uh, which is called One, Two, Three, and um, you could say that uh, there's a whole um, uh, base for the film, which is basically uh, lyrics from a protest song that was written in May 68 uh, by a Congolese student uh, that was affiliated with the Situationist International. So one of the last international, or if maybe probably the last international avant-garde from modernity, let's say. So that were where a lot of people from different countries were connected into a, a movement that was at the same time revolutionary, and but that would use also artistic forms and, and, and shapes of vocabulary in order to um, reflect onto uh, their, their, their daily life. Uh, so they would use cinema, among others, but uh, um, but also photography, collage, and all sorts of, and a lot of texts that were written. Um, so basically, I start with a document for this project, and then uh, and then it's all about. For me, it's always it's uh, it's always about you know going back uh, on location and and trying to find back some people that are connected to the story. So there, I could find the author. I was lucky enough to find back the author in, in Kinshasa, and so I proposed to him to to record this song uh, today. And and then you have to think about what kind of meaning it could have, but also how you are going to do it. And so everything has to uh, get some meaning. You know, it's not about just doing it. It's just it's it's about doing it in a way that it will be meaningful for the present also. So there I decided to work with young female musicians for different reasons that I can explain later, maybe not now because it's going to be too long, but uh, so it's, it's all about uh, producing this song now and to make it in a certain way with this amateur musician, uh, but giving them also um, a sort of uh, backing that is very professional in order to do that. Um, and so it's all it's a it's a way also to en encourage what they were doing as a female group and whole female band um, in a in a in a milieu which is very machist and very patriarchal also, uh, which is a milieu of music in Congo and more precisely of rumba. And and so it's it's so f since the start it's like trying to bridge you know two different. Uh, let's say sequence of times or to try to reconduct something that has to do with transmission about a story that is not known over there while these young women are not aware at all about that story but still there is this guy who wrote it and can do something about it so the film is in some way this this act of reconstruction um, and then there is a setting, there is a space where everything is filmed, which is only one space, but it's also very lauded in terms of history, because it's a Roomba club that was kind of mythic uh, in Kinshasa. And everything happens there. And then there is a protocol to, to put this woman in, into, into some kind of um, performance, I would say, uh, because they are playing music uh, together but they're, they're somehow alone in the building and they are connected with earplugs and transmitters. So they try to play together, basically. And, and so the film is showing this while actually the story is being told. And, and then there's a, there's a ending. Uh, so you could say that there, there is like a, a way to connect two very different stories, like a story that is connected with Roomba and the place of Roomba, the political importance of Roomba also, not only cultural, but also a very political role of Roomba within the Congolese society. And it's a way to reconnect actually with the, with the modernity in Congo, where I think that the creativity and the, and the, well, let's say the creativity at large uh, is much more present within the musical field than within the visual field of, of let's say, visual art. Some, something have happened 
but they were really channeled by, by Belgian colonists, basically, while rumba, although it has been influenced also by Belgian musicians that were present, is really a mix of uh, very different things, and also from Cuba, actually, music coming back from South America or Central America. So when you do a film like that, it's, uh, of course, it's a lot of research to um, try to get to know as far as you can uh, what you're playing with, because of course there is a very, um, there's a dimension that has to do with, you know, playing together, when literally like, like musician, you know, it's, it's about a composition that is being recomposed, let's say, you know, so it's about this relation between composition and recomposition, let's say, I think the film is about that, but also the film is about uh, what is being told in the, in the song, and this is something else, of course, this is some kind of very outdated uh, revolutionary uh, lyrics, but at the same time they are connected to the present situation in Congo. And this we can see in the films also because the moment that the film is, is shot actually is a moment where you have like very big insurrection in the city happening. So all this is also completely uh, unexpected, you know. So when I was speaking about the unexpected, it's part of this is of course that what happened in Congo, although that was terrible <coughs> at that time, um, gave a total other meaning to the, to the work I was doing. And somehow, although it was risky uh, for the whole team, what happened at that moment and the conditions we were working uh, in, uh, it changed radically um, the film, basically. Um, and um, so this is something you, you really cannot predict. Um, uh, and also the whole, I would say, on a, on a much more uh, smaller or on a smaller basis, the whole play with, with the performative part of the film is really about this musician playing together because they have been rehearsing. I mean, they've been, you know, doing this for weeks and even months that they've been prepared to do for the, for the shooting. Um, this shooting is not really prepared as such, so it's a very short shooting. And, and technically, so everything is fought from, from Brussels with, you know, like the sound engineer and, and, but it still has to work, you know, technically in a building like here also, if you have a lot of concrete, you don't know if the, how it's going to happen. So sometimes you can prepare something on paper and then you start and, and it just doesn't work. So here we were lucky enough that it was working too, uh, even to, uh, too good, or it was it was even better than what we expected. So, but still, it's like it's all it's it's all about you know trying to play together where you're not facing each other. So musicians they they're used to rehearse one in front of another, and of course there's the, the eye contact, all the codes that are not spoken that are connected to, um, yeah, to like uh, I would say. Uh, facial communication, this, all this kind of thing is not there. So there is a zone of insecurity that is created for them. At the same time, there is a sort of comfort zone because they've been prepared for that. So it's, it's all about bringing them into a situation that they don't know in advance that it's going to be like that. But still, it's not that it's something that, that they cannot deal with. So, and this is also creating a zone of, of uh, I, say, I said insecurity, but it's also of probably of creativity for, for, for all the team. I mean, for them, but also for the filmmaker, for the, for the director of photography and so on. So yeah, this is really so a lot of decisions that are made on the spot. Um, and, uh, and this is this kind of tension that I like to use. Um, and, uh, and sometimes I, I, I say, okay, I, the next, the next one, I, I will never do it like this because it's too much of insecurity. But uh, I, I see that again and again, it's how I work. So somehow it's prob possibly that I need something like that in order to, to, to do it the way I want.